and welcome back. I'm Mabel John. You're watching WHCC TV coming to you live from Washington, D.C. In our studio right now, we have a guest who has focused on healthcare quality for a lot of his career and has seen some of the improvements that organizations are trying to make today, something that he's worked on for the past 20 years. Thank you, Dr. Shulkin, for being in our studio. Glad to be here. So when you started your career, or really focusing on healthcare quality, what were some of the things you thought were really important at the time? Well, I started at a time that there was a large focus on the cost of care. And it was really the beginning of what we saw of the managed care industry focusing on utilization. And I thought it was very important that we took into account the clinical outcomes as well as the cost. And that's, of course, what today we talk about value in healthcare, which is both the cost and the clinical outcomes of care. Okay, so some of the things that you worked on quite a few years ago, people are just starting to come to the table at and really taking a hard look at what their organizations are doing. Any advice on what physician groups should be looking at and doing better? Well, I think what we learned over the years is, is that you have to always be looking at whether there's an alignment of your clinical goals and your business goals. And when there's not an alignment, it's often hard to get the type of improvements and see the pace of improvements. So now that we're beginning to see new models of delivery and new models of paying for care, I think when they're aligned with the clinical interest of the patient, we're gonna be moving in the right direction. Okay, and are we close to that? Are we close to coming up with a uniform model that could work across the board? No, I don't think we're close. I think that um, there's not going to be a magic bullet. This is a change that's going to take time, but we have to be continuing to evolve and learning from what we're doing and learning to stop doing what's not working and start doing more of what's working. And this is it's going to take years for us to do, but we're still in the period of time of where there's a lot of experimentation, disruption in the way that we're doing business. I think all of that is good as long as we're continuing to strive for the right goals and as long as we're continuing to learn about what's working and do more of that. Talk a little bit about your work with the VA now. Well, the VA was a very interesting time for me, a great experience because I had the chance to be in an environment free from the typical reimbursement rules that people in the private sector had. So Congress would allocate a pot of money and say, do what's right for taking care of veterans. So we were able to do things that the private sector isn't able to do because of reimbursement challenges like integrate behavioral health and physical health, mm -hmm. be able to focus on the social determinants of care and really take a population health approach towards illness and helping patients. And so I think that those lessons brought out to the private sector are really important because it's one of the reasons why VA healthcare actually has better outcomes in right. general than the private sector. What would it take for the private sector to emulate what the VA has done? Well, I think what we're seeing is we need to move towards a allocation of dollars on a population basis. And that doesn't mean socialized medicine. That just means allowing a group of provider organizations integrated with community organizations to take care of the population that it serves. And I think those are the lessons that we're beginning to see. And CMS has just recently come out with a mm -hmm. potential proposal that they're interested in doing on geographic allocations of dollars for populations of patients. I think that's the right direction we need to move in. Is it enough or do you think it should be taken a step further from there? And well, in I what think, way? I think, I think CMS is moving in this direction. I think that um, they have to do it cautiously, but I think that they're approaching this in the right way, and I hope that the provider community and the payer community embraces what they're trying to do so we can move this faster. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed that this is your first time at the World Healthcare Congress. Why come this year? Well, um, you know, first of all, I think that this is a great forum when you see the type of people who are here. It's the right audiences, a mixture of employers, payers, providers, government people, policy people, that it really is gonna to take to solve the types of complex problems and issues that we have in healthcare. So I think it's a great forum and uh, something I'm delighted to participate in. And you're presenting as well. Tell me a little bit about what you're going to be talking about. Well, I have the chance to be able to describe what it's like to enter the government uh, from the private sector 
and of course I was in both the Obama administration and the Trump administration, so mm -hmm. somewhat of a unique view and being able to look at how it is to be able to change government and impact health policy from different administrations. Okay, Dr. Shulkin, thank you so thank much you. for your time today. Thank you. And I'm Mabel Jong. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.